All right, welcome back to Humankind. This is the second episode we have in the last one transitioned from Neolithic tribe nomads to becoming our first civilization. And we picked the, I already forgot the name of them. Uh, something with H. <laughs> the Harapans. For some reason, it was something with T, H and T in my head, but Harapans is who we picked. So we are kind of poised for being good with food stuff which then again helps with growing people and and land and everything we're gonna have our troops just go auto explore more because they're still even though we're no longer a tribe uh, there's still things to discover around the world between natural wonders and resources and whatnot there's a whole slew of things to figure out once our first outpost or city is established, we also get some options on researching right now. We can't do anything here. Uh, I'm considering which to go first. Do we get the dyes? Or do we get the horses? I think we go for the dyes. So the first thing that we would want to get is a calendar. Over here we can see there's some something to be discovered so our troops are going to walk onto it very automatically and we have found a ruined shrine giving us some 15 research points toward nothing and some influence up here do not worry even though we don't see any research points right here right now once we have our city established which we need to do here this will be our primary city our first city our capital uh we get these resources that we didn't have uh, already added to our research progression, which I really quite enjoy. Now, this is similar to these types of games. Uh, first of all, this is our name. This is the defensive. This is how many people live here. We have a maximum of eight currently that could live here. Uh, this is how many districts are in there. Like we could later attach this outpost here that would um, that's not actually a district, that's wrong. Uh, that's a territory. A district is one of those hexes. So if we went ahead and built something like this here, the canal network, uh, which are built around great rivers. Yes, we've done that. There's a lot of great rivering going on here. Uh, so we could build this, giving us minus 10 stability, which is this pink thing up here. Uh, based on stability, we have a little bit of an issue or not with people potentially rebelling so you want a high stability certain interactions or buildings cost you stability most of these districts cost you stability it's a um, it's a measure to prevent you from just villainily expanding so you have to think about things a little bit anyway so we can build this giving us plus three food and plus three food per adjacent farmer so ideally we want this kind of around other things so we don't want to put it here where it could benefit one two three we would like it rather here where it could benefit one two three four five or even more if we could put it for example here here would be pretty darn ideal so we can only attach them to one another. So a first order of business would be to build another food thing. But we already get 30 food out of all these without needing to build anything. That I'm kind of not super fussed about it. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to get our pottery workshop going. Uh, this is something that's just a little internal improvement. And this is going to give us plus four influence, which is, as you saw before, a fairly important resource for us to expand. So what else do we have? We have these public ceremonies where we could just generate food for working. Uh, we have these districts which we could build. But as I said, doesn't really make much sense. Now, we don't have any population yet. We can't assign population to work any of these categories to generate more. Uh, we will set this to city growth. Uh, growth this only means in which um, in which priority should the AI assign populations as they appear so the more food you have the more people are gonna or the quicker people are gonna be spawned 
Um, your city's food output is high enough to support population growth. So um, it says plus 25% on, on the next turn. So next turn we get our first population boy and then we can check how much we get. And they are going to be assigned on food duty, getting us more food. Industry is used to build these things. As you can tell down there in the costs area, it says 105 industries used it. So since we produce 11 industry right now, that's around 10 turns to create it. Actually, yeah, that's around, it's a little bit less than 10, like nine point something, but that's close enough. I actually quite like these interfaces. They're pretty clean. Uh, they're a little bit kind of complicated in the beginning because there's a lot of options that are primarily information type things or filters or whatnot. Like you don't need any of this. You can just scroll through here. So they take up a whole lot of real estate with this stuff, which you don't need all that often, I found. Anyway. Uh, we have founded our first city and they are building on pottery stuff. Over here we are trying to build another outpost, having horses and some dye. We found, ooh, hello, coffee and ebony and a mystery resource. That's another good area. We, we have, uh, we're pretty decently lucky right now, quite honestly. That's not too shabby and it looks like we might be fairly alone on this island thing because up here there can't be all that much more. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it is. So we have gained our first population and they are set to work here. Adding or reducing. Weren't we producing 30? I don't remember how much we were producing, but some. So every turn we get plus 24%. Meaning we need another four turns to get another person. The more person people they are the slower it becomes because the more food is being used for feeding people interestingly enough so we found some curiosity giving us some wealth here population gain is done so. okay we didn't discover this so we don't really care all that much our research is done that's very good so we can now start working these resources here, which we probably should do um, because that gives us some more coin. And the longer we have more coin, the more coin we will have in the end. That makes a whole lot of sense, doesn't it? So let's see. What do we want? Let's get on the horses, learn about domestication. And we will check our city here where we are doing pottery. And once we're done with pottery, we don't want to start a granary. No, no. Which would be pretty good and it's going to be good. But uh, instead we want to start farming these things. And we want to start farming both. And after that we'll see where we are. Because 33 turns, that's a whole lot of time still. So we'll have to wait a little bit. Set up here. Over here has got the population, even though it's not ready yet, it's already growing because it produces some food, some good food too. Quite a bit of it. So in the beginning, it's a lot of having auto exploring on. You could, of course, direct your exploring personally, which would make a lot more sense than what they are doing. They're kind of running in circles, but underneath the fog of war, even though you have been in an area, there's always a chance of new things popping back up. And it looks like on our island we're fairly alone. Which is good. Uh, we have discovered Lake Hillier, which is down here. And for some reason it's pink. A sight more likely found in the unreality of dream time than in waking hours. The lake is place of a spiritual rejuvenation. And it was first discovered by us. And if we control it, we get plus 5 inference, plus 10 stability on this city or outpost, plus 10 money on this city or outpost. So if we control this territory where it's in, which is actually pretty decent territory even without this, um, we would get the positive effects here. Now, the further away from your main cities you build an outpost, the more expensive it is in terms of influence 
And it, it almost looks like we have discovered all there is and we are alone on our little island. Unless there is more island here. Which is pretty cool because that means most of what we see here is going to be reliably ours. I think it's pretty, pretty neat, yeah. So what do we have up here? Nothing super interesting. Unknown strategic resource, some horses. Double horses might be good. Do we want another outpost here? Unknown strategic resource doesn't help us yet, but there is a whole lot of food and research and, oh yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff here. Let's check. Oof, look at that. 29 food and 6 production. That's fantastic. I think we'll take it. I think we'll take it. Okay, we need new research. And we're going to go with... What are we going to go with? We don't really need a lumber yard right now. Not yet, anyway. Could go for flood irrigation. Giving us some public fountains, adding stability options. Or laws, but that's really long. Okay, let's go for city defense. That's good. The dis uh, the defense the garrison district is something we can build. It's like a little fortress, and we get a palisades that we can build, and we can recruit warriors. That's that's okay, I think. Just like in Civilization, you can, throughout the ages, upgrade your units. So once you have researched a new level of unit type, pretty much, you get to upgrade them to whatever comes after them. So once you discover gunpowder, you're not stuck with club-wielding savages that did you very well before, but now just kind of look silly. There's a lair here, which we could raid for some food, but I don't see the point. The old horde. I'm hoping that these guys are going to go over here. But this is pretty cool. And another thing about what we see here, there is a difference here between the dark water. It's very subtle. You can see it a little bit better over here. The dark water and the light water. So the light water, where you can see the land a little bit underneath, that is where you will be able to embark to with land units uh, without losing them, but you can't cross the dark water. So right now, I do not see any other islands directly connected to us where anyone could just ship over anytime soon. We can't really leave either, except for up north, but that's, I don't think there is anyone. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty alone. That's kind of cool. Very isolationist. Should give us a good amount of uh, breathing room to grow as we please. We don't really need to worry all that much about what's going on. And we can just send our boys off. The next thing I want. Got this. This here isn't too interesting. This area is pretty good. Has this, this, and this. Well, maybe this. So let's send them out here and find another good city spot. Probably this here. Comes already with plus five food and one construction productivity. That looks really interesting. Good, our research is done. Let's find something new. And we'll go with... Yeah, why not go with writing? We have some civics. So, we are the Harapans, right? We have a society. We live in a society. And we have these... They call it ethic axes or something like that. Uh, and you basically decide where you want to go. Being in the middle gives you stability, which is good. You want stability. Being on the outside can give you also bonuses, like... Uh, plus 2% range on district and detection range on district, or plus 4 influence from any dis uh, district that is specialized. Could go for faith from the territory or from to science, stuff like that. You decide. 
with your civics. So this is the civics wheel. These kind of pop up. So what are our founding myths? And you can see how it kind of moves. Each decision moves it. It also gives its own bonuses, like plus five influence. I, I, I really like that. But we found these people and they were distraught and they didn't kill us. They weren't sick. So I think I think we have a divine mandate to be here. It seems so. If the gods hadn't chosen us, somebody else would be standing here. It's true. So another question here. Minus 50% on create output co outpost cost. That's pretty attractive. Historical precedent and tradition serve as the basis for our judgments. I think so. I think so. That seems to leave a lot of interpretation of right and wrong. Not to mention yours and mine. Yeah, but it allows us to expand easier, see? So we could even build an outpost out here. Uh, because it suddenly doesn't instead of 180 which would be higher now because we already built another outpost the more outposts you have the the costlier it gets uh depending on the distance so we could kind of soon afford this so that's neat okay more stuff's being collected for us which is all good and neat we're still building this up become a thing Ah, oh, we already done those, so the game is a little bit slower than we are. I've not yet formed a religion. We're just kind of considering who we are as a people, where we come from, where we go. And I like that these early choices stick with you without being something that you have to keep. Like, you could change your civics throughout time. If you feel later on that's no longer the way your people should behave then you can switch it it costs a little bit of money but you can definitely switch it right i wanted to figure out how much or where the best one is yeah so it's one of these and it's going to be this one because this one gives one more food than the other one so there we go and these guys go on auto exploration again so having lowered the influence cost to build these outposts, we have already boosted our potential output by quite a bit. Later on, uh, it might be more sensible to switch over to where we get more or, or less cost for attaching stuff. But attaching stuff also lowers your stability. So it's something you can't do willy-nilly all the time anyway. So we'll have to see. For now, we'll wait until our artisan's quarters are done. And lots of little pop-ups hovering across one another, which is one of the issues I have with the game. It looks very neat and clean, but stuff kind of overlays each other. Now we are about to create our religion. So we can have polytheism, faith per number of attached territories, plus five, or we go for shamanism, giving us plus one faith, per population uh, I think we go with polytheism yeah so our religion can't do anything yet we don't have a tenant and we don't have a lot of followers but that's fine we'll eventually get them it has to kind of convert i haven't spent much time on this beyond the tenants i must admit so we'll figure it out as we go something i did notice already which i kind of fail to say sometimes but i thought i pointed out anyway is the music the music's real nice gonna like the music fantastic stuff there all right what do we got? Keepers of the Creed. An unexpected rivalry has erupted between two temples in Harappa, each representing a different sect of Harappan polytheism. One temple argues that the religious matter should be left in the hand of the dispassionate men, 
while the other contends that only women with their capacity for nurturing life possesses the necessary understanding for these affairs. These quarrels must be stopped before your inhabitants start fighting each other. Who should be your religious leader? And I think the women have it. So we go more towards theology here. Shifting the power ever more. On this um, ethics scale toward tradition. So we get plus four faith on territory. As long as we stay here in this bracket. But we lose stability. So if we check our city now. Well the main city doesn't really suffer from it. But if we had a different city. Which we don't. Uh, it would probably suffer somewhere. We would see it. Is my point. Alright. So these guys here are now done and we can build these outposts here using influence to harvest the luxuries luxury resources and i think we're gonna also do that oh this is quite costly 52 influence that is not to be trifled with we might go for the horse so do we really need the horses Uh, not really. We'll leave it. That's fine. For now. For now, it's fine. A first emblematic quarter. It's a symbol of power and a lasting memory of this era. All right. Be smug. I don't want to be smug. Thank you, though. Uh, so what that meant, emblematic district, means that we built one of those districts. Uh, there are districts that are not emblematic. I believe that stuff like this obelisk to the gods isn't emblematic um, or this canal network isn't emblematic. I actually don't see anywhere, it's, it's nowhere written that it's emblematic. Uh, but that's how I understand it, going off the commentary of this nice dude uh, who has been commenting on certain things. So what we want is we would like to have some more food but we need to be careful again with the stability thing we might also want some faith so our church can develop but it's all very costly so we'll go ahead and get this going over here so we can then build the main thing down there i think world as it ever was is divided into the rulers and the ruled great sprawling empires and proud independent cities your struggle is with other empires but you should not forget the part these free cities can play so free cities aren't all that interesting honestly we go with assimilation cost or army higher cost i've only ever assimilated them Let's go with uh, we we'll want see if these independent people end up as shock troops, cannon fodder, or respected allies. So here we go. That's an independent city. These are this very nice baby powder blue. Uh, and you gain influence. You can spend a little bit of money on them, for example, to gain quicker. Uh, we're we're fighting against another group here, and if we reach a hundred, then we can go ahead and integrate them so we just gain them as a city pretty much they have armies moving about which we then can click on and get basically you also see how close or far away they are from our uh, ideals we're pretty close in terms of um, tradition we're fairly far away on terms of individualism and the rest doesn't really matter to them so our Global proximity. Is it ours or is it a global one? Our entire I think this one is ours and this is global, which I don't know why exactly we care. But that's okay. So these just exist and you deal with them. <laughs> All right. I think that's fine for now. I will leave it at that. Uh, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed and learned something.
if there's even anything to learn from at this stage of the game. And I hope to see you around next time. Until then, fare thee well. Bye-bye.